Prior to Christ, I was uh, really set on trying to find fulfillment. I think a lot of guys, when they're young, they want to know, you know, really what is the purpose of my life. And I wasn't thinking of that in a really deeply philosophical way. I just wanted to do something that, that gave me some identity. I wanted to feel some type of, of worth or value. And so I thought, well, you know, the bigger, the greater you do something, the more value there is, the more identity there is in that. And so I was kind of chasing a dream for a while of skateboarding and I was sponsored by Van Shoes and I kind of got some attention for doing that. I saw some popularity, some friends coming from it. But after a while, I kind of got burned out on the skateboarding. It just wasn't really doing it for me anymore. And so I kind of left that behind. And, and next thing I know, I'm just kind of in this lull of, of nothing. And so I started kind of thinking deeply, like, well, okay, what could I do with my life? I, I got to come up with something. And that's where the idea of uh, becoming a Navy SEAL uh, kind of just popped into my brain. Like, that's huge. It's the military's most difficult, grueling military training. And I just decided while I was going to junior college, my first year failing all my classes, I basically was a dropout. I'm supposed to be taking, you know, these finals. I just decided I'm going to be a SEAL. And uh, I ended up getting introduced to a Navy SEAL by the name of Scott Helvenston, who the very first time I ever met him, uh, he really beat the snot out of me. And I didn't know what to make of that, but he was testing me to see if I really had what it takes. He started working with me. And so I went from just being some stranger to, it was like he was my second father. He mentored me and I really idolized him. He's everything that I, I wanted to be. And so I get a phone call from him as he's on his way out. He's about to go to Iraq and he tells me that he knows for certain I'm going to make it through SEAL training. So he's just really giving me that confidence. We say our goodbyes and the next time I see Scott, it wasn't, you know, back home to see me go through SEAL training. It was on television uh, and he was, he was dead. It was March 31st, 2004. Uh, his vehicle was ambushed and I was actually watching graphic video footage being spread throughout uh, the, the, the TV stations of, of Scott and three other Americans uh, brutally murdered and, and dragged through the streets of Fallujah, Iraq and, and set on fire. And uh, this just really just this radically changed my life seeing this. You know, I, I didn't know where to go from here other than, all right, I got to press forward. And once I become a Navy SEAL, you know, once I fill Scott's shoes, that's where everything will come together. Until then, I have no peace, but you know, I'm, I'm just investing all of myself in becoming a Navy SEAL. And so I just really put high hopes in once I become a SEAL, that's where everything comes together. And I didn't question that. And that graduation day, finally, this is the moment, you know, I've become a SEAL. This is where everything's supposed to come together. Not only was it one of the highest highs, but on the same day, it was one of the lowest lows. And I didn't understand why, why is this deflating? This is where it all begins, why? And I later heard these words spoken by a Christian philosopher named Ravi Zacharias, and these words, I thought, described exactly what I experienced graduation day. He says, one of the loneliest moments a man will ever experience is when he's achieved that which he thought would deliver the ultimate, and in the end, it lets him down. What he's referring to really is just the human condition that all this world has to offer you will never be enough and the worst place that you could basically ever be in is when you have finally gotten to the top and there is no next and you still realize I'm still just the same guy empty pockets so before Christ I mean this is where my life really went downhill I thought that you know that that's all life has to offer and I felt kind of numb I, I kind of felt like well, what is the, what is the point of all of this and, and just really got narcissistic. I just started living for self and whatever made me feel, which was really just the drinking and the partying, uh, but just all the robbery that comes with that in the end, you're robbing yourself, you know, the blacking out, the foolishness, and I was making some very big mistakes and it really was getting to a point where here I am, an active duty Navy SEAL, uh, but I'm just taking this lifestyle of the partying and the drinking so far where I'm going to get myself killed or somebody else killed and uh, really scared them my family and I find myself just agreeing to go to a church event just to appease them, just to make them happy. I, I didn't have any sincere motives of being there. I actually had intentions of drinking later that night with some friends and, and that's where uh, I really heard the gospel for the first time in such a way that I understood it. And I felt like I've got this open door, this opportunity to respond here. And so what it was, was uh, the pastor opened up to 2 Kings chapter 5, the story of Naaman, the Syrian commander, who's just this guy that has really got it going on, on the outside. But in reality, underneath it all, he's falling apart. He's got a very serious skin disease, leprosy, and it leads to death. 
But ultimately, Naaman was provided this way out from God, very unique, nobody had ever been healed. And what it was, was he was required to humble himself before his creator. This is a prideful guy. I mean, can you imagine the ego? Uh, and at first he was struggling. At first he refused to do what he was asked to do. He was just asked to go dip yourself in the Jordan River seven times come up, your flesh will be restored. But his ego gets in the way to the point where he actually goes storming off and says, no, I'm not going to do this. To him it just seemed like foolishness. And that's what they say about the preaching of the cross in the New Testament. The preaching of the cross is foolishness. It's so simple. It seems foolish. And so, I mean, I've got all this arrogant pride of being a Navy SEAL, but at the same time I know this isn't the solution to everything. I'm, I'm miserable. I'm living a lie in front of people, acting like I really got it going on. But in reality, I'm, I'm just in the worst state I've ever been in. This, this lifestyle that I'm living in, I was backstroking in and saying, you know what, I, I don't want anything to do with that anymore. It's not because I, not because me, but because the Jesus Christ came into this world to remove that obstacle of sin. And so what we need to do is repent. We need to humble ourselves. We need to surrender ourselves to him and place our faith and trust in him. And the scriptures say, repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come. You will never have peace here on earth until you have peace with your creator.